Hi friends, uh, welcome back uh, to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, today my post is about two things. Uh, acute pancreatic inflammation or also called acute pancreatitis. And also November is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. And I wanted to quick touch on who should we screen uh, or who should we kind of give extra attention to to pick up pancreatic cancer. So what I wanted to talk about is who gets pancreatic acute pancreatitis what are the, how do we make the diagnosis, what causes it, how do we treat it, and how can we prevent it. It's one of the most leading causes of GI admissions. There are about close to 300,000 cases that get admitted with a cost of about $2 billion to the healthcare economy. If you can see, the incidence uh, of uh, pancreatic cancer goes up with age. As age goes up, there seems to be more pancreatitis that can develop. The pancreas is a gland that sits right beneath the stomach and helps in digestion. It helps pump dige uh, digestive juices. It also is the seat of the insulin secreting cells that lower blood sugar. So it does two things. It helps in digestion and also helps in hormonal regulation of blood sugar among other things. To make a diagnosis of pancreatitis, you need at least two of the uh, three things. One, there's, you have to be able to have pain. Without pain, it's hard to make a diagnosis of pancreatitis. There's a blood test called lipase that comes when pancreas gets inflamed, it's a blood test, and you need at least three times elevation of that. Many times, there's some scanning that's done, and on, on CT scans, you can see evidence of inflammation. There are many causes of acute pancreatitis, uh, most common ones is gallstones. The gallbladder sits right next to the uh, liver and it drains out through the same region as the pancreas. And when the stones slip out of, slip out of the uh, gallbladder, they can irritate the pancreas. Second is alcohol. Third is a condition called idiopathic where we don't know. And uh, sometimes uh, patients can have high levels of a fat in the blood like cholesterol. It's called triglycerides. But if you have triglycerides in the hundreds or thousands, that can sometimes be a cause. There are many uncommon causes, sometimes trauma, sometimes high calcium in the blood. There's a genetic form, as well as some miscellaneous forms which are medication related. As I said, the diagnosis is made on the history with the, with the typical pain, with the typical uh, other associated things like gallstones or alcohol and you can look at it from the standpoint of the blood work, you can look at it from the standpoint of x-rays, etc. When patients have biliary pancreatitis or when the stones cause it, typically the liver enzymes go up, sometimes you see stones on the ultrasound, sometimes we get an extra test called the MRCP and the treatment for gallstone associated pancreatitis is to remove the gallbladder. I have a list up here for your reference uh, which you can go skim through at your leisure. These are medication groups uh, there's several of them, uh, some that are common, some that are uncommon, and they're grouped as class. The f initial class one are the ones that have typically been associated, the proof level is high, uh, and sometimes the other categories are less so. There are some newer based medications, such as the GLP ones, uh, and the, uh, 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 these are the ones like uh, Vigovi, uh, etc. And also we need to think about, there's a new group of drugs called checkpoint inhibitors. These are ones that are used in treatment of cancer. They're being used uh, quite a bit. And uh, there's some elevation uh, of uh, uh, the blood test and sometimes it can go on to become full-blown pancreatitis in that group of patients as well. How do we treat it? Mostly supportive care, nothing by mouth initially. Quite a bit of aggressive IV fluids uh, need to be given. And I think uh, uh, if you can, we can hit aggressive IV fluids initially, that seems to be of some help, but you need to keep, make sure that we keep an eye on other things that, you know, if somebody has heart failure, this, that, you don't want to pump too much fluid. So it's an individualization, but the concept is the more IV fluids we get, the more healing seems to be uh, faster. The goal on diet is initially to rest the pancreas, but then the thinking is beginning to change that as things start becoming better, uh, even if there is a lingering uh, pancreatitis, you can start giving something orally so that uh, you are able to actually, uh, there's some benefits of uh, restarting food so that bacterial translocation infections, etc., are prevented. 
in people uh, that cannot tolerate it sometimes it becomes very severe the pancreas can die as in the next slide the, in those pa in in that group of patients iv food called tpm is a way to kind of support till the pancreas heals over i think the main thing we need to think about as we send patients home is to make sure that we continue to focus on alcohol tobacco uh, stopping smoking seems to be a big help too uh, in patients who had gallstone associated pancreatitis, the gallbladder removal needs to be planned for. In people who have high, high triglycerides or that fat in the blood, we just need to kind of make sure that there's a plan to follow up with that. And in terms of the idiopathic uh, or unexplained pancreatitis, first episode is fine, but if they're having it repeatedly, some genetic testing, other things may need to be done. Readmission can be sometimes common uh, in about uh, 15 to 20%. Sometimes diabetes can develop because the other hormone rele releasing cells can be damaged. Sometimes if there's acute attacks of pancreatitis, uh, multiple attacks, the pancreas digestive power goes down so that you, can, you get maldigestion of fatty foods, etc. And very rarely if there's complications of this acute attack where there is uh, a cyst developing or this pancreatic tissue that gets dead, it can block off the bile duct. So these things can happen even after people go home, but we just need to kind of keep an eye on for it. Switching gears, uh, you know, pancreatic cancer, unfortunately, can be uh, a tough problem to deal with. People, we, we notice that pancreatic cancer is more common in males. It's more common as we age. It's more common in people in visceral obesity or just having obe obesity seems to be a risk factor. Smoking is a risk factor. The other piece is that there's a group of genetic diseases uh, that have been known to have increased risk of uh, pancreatic cancer associated with. Ex uh, examples of genetic diseases are the BRAC, B-R-A-C gene that's associated with breast cancer. There's familial polyposis, Lynch. There's some specific set of genetic diseases. So if there is some family history uh, of pancreatic cancer, I think talk to your provider to see if genetic testing could be appropriate. But the keys in Preventing pancreatic cancer for us as a broad whole seem to be control of obesity, avoiding smoking, making if there is any genetic predisposition, then screening for pancreatic cancer, just like we screen for colon cancer with colonoscopies, etc. For pancreatic cancer, one may read, one may require in this group of patients who have genetic susceptibility periodic MRIs and ultrasounds starting at different ages. So that, that's a new evolution in thinking that's come about in the last year or so. Uh, but, but that needs specific identification of genetic testing, if, especially if there's family history of other diseases that have been associated with genetic cancer, such as breast, etc., or Lynch syndrome or other co uh, colon cancer syndromes. But you need genetic testing first, followed by periodic MRIs or a test called endoscopic ultrasound where we go down with a camera and look at the pancreas. So those are things to think about, um, but pancreatitis uh, as a whole as well as pancreatic cancer, and I want us to keep thinking about this area uh, and uh, educating ourselves. So if you ever have this or one of our loved ones or friends have this, we're able to advise or think about it. Thank you for joining me today.